the Zapata Peninsula is Cuba's most renowned birding location. A variety of habitats supports a wealth of endemics, including the famously elusive Zapata rail, out there somewhere. Much of Zapata is swamp and marshland, accessed via a few dirt roads, but it also has dry forests and large open savanna-like habitats dotted with palm trees. Most birders stay at Playa Larga, situated at the head of the Bay of Pigs. It's well placed for most of the best birding sites, as well as being on the beach. The hotel complex is a rather typical Cuban government-run affair. The grounds at least provide easy access to some of the locally common species, such as Zeneda doves. common ground dove and the ubiquitous greater Antillean grackle. It's the glossier blue males that sport the typical grackle keel-shaped tail. Cuban crows also proved easy to see here. Elsewhere, they were generally wary and unobtrusive, though always vocal. They are not a true endemic, as they can also be found in the southern Bahamas. Best of all were a regular flock of Cuban Amazons. They were particularly attracted to the seed pods on the local tamarind trees. As with the crows, despite their name, current thinking suggests this same species resides in the Bahamas and also on the Cayman Islands. Just east of Playa Larga, there is good birding habitat around the small village of Soplilar. With luck, the tracks through the forest here can produce delights such as this roosting pair of endemic Cuban nightjars. The sexes differ in that the male, seen here on the right, has an extensive whitish tip to the tail, whereas the female only has a narrow buff-coloured tip. The magnificent Stygian Owl is another possibility. Although found elsewhere in Central and South America, Cuba offers birders some of the best chances of seeing rather than just hearing it. Both ruddy quail dove and grey-fronted quail dove were not so obliging on our visit. More open woodland here is favoured by Cuban pygmy owls, another endemic that proved to be fairly common, though more often heard than seen. Other endemics can be found where the habitat becomes even more open and savanna-like, with palm trees playing host to nesting bare-legged owls. These are typical views as one pokes its head out of a nest hole. Flocks of Cuban parakeets are also more rarely seen here, particularly where there are flowering or fruiting trees. They are noisy in flight, but fall silent when feeding. Being rather timid and nomadic by nature, it was good to get such good views. And this is also the haunt of Fernandina's flicker. This female was the only one found, and thankfully it eventually showed well. A 
the male would show a black mustachial stripe. Also here were smooth-billed arnies. Yellow-headed warbler, a little easier to film here than they had been at Vinales. More Cuban toadies. A rather obliging Cuban lizard cuckoo. La Sagra's flycatcher. Cuban peewee. And Cuban green woodpecker. Red on the forehead show this to be a male. Despite a relatively short bill, they still feed like a typical woodpecker. On the east shore of the Bay of Pigs, the Cueva de los Peces is a lagoon linked to the sea by an underground tunnel and is a local tourist attraction. In recent years, staff at the restaurant have begun feeding birds here, and amazingly this has attracted blue-headed quail doves. These are normally shy birds, sometimes only glimpsed along forest tracks, so to see 15 in one go was a revelation. They seemed relaxed feeding alongside a picnic shelter. So much so that some of the males were displaying. This individual showed some black on the forehead. But of even greater interest was that at least one had a completely black crown. Maybe this population is generating its own colour morph. Red-legged thrushes were also attracted to the scraps. A bird seen at Vinales, but they're usually hidden in the undergrowth. They are a rather smart looking thrush, and here of the western race with orange around the vent. The few tracks leading through the swamps are the best option for finding the endemic Zapata wren. We could hear them out on the marshes at La Turba, but they failed to appear. We may do with the first filmable Cuban emerald, with this female, or possibly juvenile, given the small subocular spot. A loggerhead kingbird. and another showy Cuban green woodpecker. We may have missed the wren, but at the end of the track we did eventually locate a Zapata sparrow. There are two more races in Cuba in the north and east, so its other name of Cuban sparrow seems more appropriate, if a little uninventive, given like the woodpecker it is the only species in its genus. Another longer track leads to Santa Tomas, from where boats can be taken deeper into the swamp. Here at last we found a Zapata wren. With the wren bagged, we could enjoy some of the other species here which included flocks of turkey vultures basking in the morning sun. Birds here are of the nominate race. A West Indian woodpecker. 
This could be a juvenile female, as the red on the crown appears also to have some black feathering. And a pair of northern flickers. Here the male. And the female. The Cuban race is one of the yellow shafted forms. It has been considered a separate species, but the differences in breast crescent shape and underpart spotting appear marginal. Back near Playa Larga at Palpite, one of the enterprising villagers has turned the flowering tree in his back garden into a local attraction. Common birds here included Cuban blackbirds. tawny-shouldered blackbirds that up until then had proved hard to get good views of. And Cuban orioles, including this lone juvenile, looking very different from its black and yellow parents. A male Cuban emerald was regularly on show. They were not, however, the star performers here. That accolade belonged to the fabulous bee hummingbirds. The males are shining blue above, with what appears to be a blackish crown and throat. However, in the right light, this transforms into a kaleidoscope of glittering reds, oranges and yellows. It helps, of course, that at this time of the year they are in full breeding plumage. Only found in Cuba, they are the world's smallest bird. Actually, the male is, as it is smaller than the female. Their tiny size, however, cannot be fully appreciated unless put into context. As this male feeding on a handheld flower shows, Females share the male's ultramarine blue upperparts, but lack the jewel-like head pattern. Juveniles are paler than the females, and young males may show some faint glimpses of their future iridescence. Wintering North American species around Zapata included this immature yellow-bellied sapsucker. and plenty of grey catbirds. Warblers were even more numerous than at Vinales, with palm warblers again the commonest species. Closely followed by American red starts, mostly females and immatures, but with a few breeding plumaged males also present. Encounters with oven birds were a regular feature of walks along forest tracks, and they were also often found around feeding areas. Both species of water thrush were here, mainly more heavily streaked and buffier northern. But also some Louisianas, pink elect, less densely streaked, and although not visible in this clip, with white unstreaked throats. Black-throated blue warblers were numerous, some even feeding on the ground. The majority were immaculate males, but there were also a few females around. Other than the white wing patch, a very different looking bird. Plenty of common yellow throats were around marshy edges and thickets, again mostly males.
and males also seem to dominate the wintering population of Cape May warblers. Seemingly less common than some of the other warblers, but also generally less obtrusive. There were also northern parulas and mobile black and white warblers. Black cheeks show this to be a male. While this individual has the telltale buff wash of an immature. <laughs> 